it is now time for the Jerry Jones Show, brought to you by Four Built for Texas, Built for You. Man, I think he's going to be in a good mood coming off that Rams butt whooping with the Philly Week preview and the NFL trade deadline today at 3 o'clock. Jerry Jones joining us on 105.3 The Fan. Good morning, Jerry. How are you? Hey, man. Good morning, Sean, RJ, Bobby, and you're absolutely right. Good mood is the <laughs> that's the definition. Hey, what was the bigger highlight? Uh, the Rams win or meeting RJ and his family before the game? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to – He's got a great-looking family, boy. I'll tell you what, I know he's proud of that. But uh, uh, certainly uh, it was great to see him, but it was uh, uh, just unbelievable to have that kind of start and to uh, uh, watch that team uh, uh, execute in all three phases. So uh, uh, let's just put them both on equal footing. I'll, I'll do both. <laughs> now, RJ, I'm uh, uh, pretty superstitious, so we got to do that every ball game, every home game. I want them out there. Well, I, I for sure will be at the Detroit game. I know that, so I'll, I'll see you on that one. Uh, Jerry, let's talk about w w what we can take from this or what this win means. Very similar blowouts against the Jets, the Giants, the Patriots, the Rams. What does this say about you guys, if anything? Well, I, I want to start with how well Dak Prescott played. And uh, uh, the, the uh, thing that was the most notable was uh, his reads and uh, how uh, he basically uh, uh, made the right throw in the right place. Obviously, they were uh, really some outstanding, there were some really outstanding throws. But what you saw was what happens when you have a quarterback of, of uh, his skill level and then you get all this experience that uh, he has uh, put under his belt over the years. And, of course, uh, the time that he's not only spent with Mike, but he spent with Moore, uh, when he, Kellen Moore, when he was here, and he's spending with Schottenheimer. All of that is coming to bear, and you saw it uh, full scale out there, so to speak, uh, uh, well, Sunday. So, uh, to me, that's the most encouraging thing about where we go from here is uh, his his quarterbacking. Uh, we all the time talk about his leadership. That shouldn't come in and even have the tone I had. It is magnificent to have his kind of leadership. So you put that with a, a strong defensive uh, group, uh, well coached. Uh, so, yes, I'm encouraged about what I saw Sunday. Are you getting more comfortable with the idea of Dak running a lot again? Because it did seem like in the last couple of weeks he's used his legs quite a bit more. Well, no, I uh, uh, will always, like everyone, hold your breath uh, when he tucks it up. Uh, and he knows that he wants to uh, uh, really uh, be judicious when he does that. But the last two ball games, if anything, have shown us how – uh, important it is for him to take advantage of them giving him running room. Jerry, you don't have the the smoke detectors aren't going <laughs> off over there, right? Is that you or is that us? I don't. That's coming in on the other line. And, okay. uh, <laughs> Tell Stephen to hang on a yeah. sec. Oh, is that a trade call? Is that, is that Roger Goodell? <laughs> is that a trade call? I'm sure that's a uh, no. I bet you and I both know what it is. It's a sales call coming in here from uh, some. Uh, uh, something and it might be even my guys with my Rolodex going to sell something. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, when you look at uh, the way the offense has played the last two weeks, uh, you know, you had led into the, these last two games telling us like, Hey, we're, we're going to make some tweaks. We're, we're going to make some changes. This isn't going to be the same. Do you think the improvements that we've seen on offense the last couple weeks are more about those tweaks and those changes you guys have made, or is it more about just time within the offense and getting the reps? Well, I think it's both, and uh, uh, the uh, changes that were made uh, uh, did re were reflected out there. Uh, the quick releases, the uh, uh, basically uh, 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 the uh, commitment to what our game plan was. We went out there with the idea of throwing that ball going downfield. We knew they'd uh, really be loaded up to stop the run. We knew before the game, uh, my, those first three or four plays – would have been enough to change uh, uh, anybody's direction if you're the play caller and uh, weren't able to keep him off Dak as far as his protection. 
but Mike stuck with it. Boy, he was determined before the game that we were going to make them uh, back off, if anything, on the run. If not, make them pay. Uh, but, again, I just can't say enough about uh, you take a couple of sacks, really could have been three official sacks, and then stand in there and execute the way Dag did. Uh, now, he had some he had some really great supporting cast help out there and Lamb and, and – uh, uh, of course, uh, that encourages you to no end because you see what can happen there. Uh, we've got some other great weapons out there. Our, our tight ends, and I emphasize plural, our tight ends are, are going to be a factor for us as we uh, get on into the last 10 games or the 10 games remaining in this season. Uh, but uh, I just like the whole picture. came out with a great taste in our mouth. Absolutely. Jerry Jones here on the fan. Uh, Jerry, do you think that the CD story on the sideline from a couple of weeks ago has impacted or impacted the other day or his great play in the past two games? And then the second part of it is, where do you think he belongs in that upper echelon conversation of elite wideouts? Well, I would put him in a category of overnight sensation. Uh, there are none. There really in most of the world that takes uh, – evolving to get to that point. Uh, certainly he uh, was uh, frustrated. He'd like to uh, have more attempts uh, come his way, and uh, we got that. And uh, I would say this to everyone, media, everybody involved, keep making him mad. <laughs> uh, keep frustrating him and let him get out here and uh, let us get the ball to him. But uh, uh, he is, without a doubt, uh, capable of having uh, that kind of production. Uh, but the good news is that uh, we've got uh, other options out there in that offense uh, that uh, will allow us when they really put some serious emphasis on the, on the lamb, will allow us to uh, come in behind them, threaten them, or make them be conservative on how much they do uh, apply uh, uh, extreme coverage to lamb. Jerry, you've said, uh, you know, in, in recent months, said a couple different times that you envision Dak being the quarterback here for the next decade um, and, and that, that that's what you see looking into the future. When you l think about the future, do you similarly envision C.D. Lamb alongside Dak over that next decade? I do, yes. I think he's uh, uh, just really scratching the surface of uh, what he can be as a player. And frankly... Uh, the two, uh, uh, the combination that you saw out there uh, uh, with uh, the advantages that it brings to uh, uh, your, just your options that you have with your offense uh, create quite a tandem. So in, in, when something like this happens, when a player is unsigned and it's in the middle of the season, when he's putting up, you know, 117 yards, 150 yards, you know, when he's putting up those kind of games, does the number go up, or is the number what the number is, and it's just it doesn't really matter if you get it done tomorrow or three months yeah, from now? Well, let's be clear. All players are unsigned at some point. And uh, so do you see what I'm saying? I'm taking mm -hmm. exception. He's signed. He's out there playing. Gotcha. And so uh, it's just a question of if you look at any of them, obviously, and I'm being tried, uh, you've got one year, two years, three years, four years left on everybody you see out there. So, uh, uh, boy, you hope uh, when you've got a month on them that they're uh, basically doing the kinds of things that make you want to have them for a new uh, or extension, a new contract. And so that's the case here and hopefully the case of several players out there. Now, the real world is you can't keep everybody uh, in the system we're in. But we've got them today. Let's use them. Jerry, uh, obviously we, we referenced it a second ago. Today is the NFL trading deadline. Where do you guys stand this morning? Just kind of some of your conversations. Is is it sort of the same feeling as you had after the game on Sunday that you don't anticipate doing anything? Well, uh, again, this is a competitive thing, as you know, but still, uh, I'm not seeing anything right at this moment. And, of course, we do have that trade deadline at 3 our time this afternoon, and, and we've really have four New York. And uh, you'd have to really – ball and jacket to get a trade done, especially one that would require any adjustments in the existing contracts of the player you traded for or the player you're trading. 
but I see us right now having a pat hand. Jerry Jones here on the fan. So, Jerry, one of the things that the listeners got on us about last week uh, was not following up after you said, well, I'm not going to put us on San Fran's level yet, maybe not even Philadelphia when we asked you about contenders. And the follow-up that they wanted us to ask was, well, if you're not on that level, then why not make a trade to get there or surpass them? It's execution. It's uh, the players we've got, uh, just as uh, uh, Lamb last week when we were talking, uh, we were coming off the game that, uh, for instance, Lamb had had or Dak had had the week before uh, against the Chargers or the uh, two weeks before, uh, which were really outstanding games. Uh, but uh, the, the, the reason that you aren't on someone's level one week and become on their level two weeks or three weeks later is because you have gelled, you have evolved. Uh, you have, uh, uh, for, if for lack of a, 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 a better example, uh, you may have lost players or you may have gained players. And so all of that comes to bear when you say, where are you relative to a team at any given point during the season relative to another team? Jerry, let me ask a stupid question. M Mike McCarthy is used to this with us every Friday. When a trade gets done, this is just in general, not specific. Do you always know that that was a possibility or option for you? Like, does news spread to everyone or sometimes a trade, a blockbuster comes down and you're like, oh, I didn't even know that person was available. What's the reality of that? No. Uh, you, uh, we have a keen sense of where there's possibilities out here. Uh, but, uh, uh, of course, like anything, like anything, uh, you may create one that might be available. I imagine that on any, uh, uh, on situations right now that I could call somebody up and make a suggestion as to what uh, the interest that we might have and give some indication of consideration and uh, uh, somebody may not even be trading a player, but if I called and told him I was going to trade him C.D. Lamb, I'm using that as, a, as an illustration tongue-in-cheek, then they might get interested in the trade. Jerry, and so all of that is out there. That's why you don't have an answer when someone says, uh, are trades a possibility? Yes, they are. But the price you would have to do to make the trade is not acceptable. It takes away more from your team than you're willing to give. Jerry, you guys have uh, obviously had some injuries along the offensive line this season, some some continuity issues just with guys available. But in years past, when there have been injuries on the offensive line, it hasn't slowed the running game to the extent that it, we're seeing right now. Why do you think the run game has had so many problems getting going? Well, you've asked the question and answered it uh, really at the same time, but it has uh, uh, been partially impacted by the um, injury situation and the offensive line, and uh, you, you uh, uh, anticipate that by having the position flex, guys you can move around, and we do. Uh, but by the same token, we're having some players that are evolving upward, their arrows going up, either coming off injury, steal, uh, uh, lesser injuries by a couple of the others or uh, the uh, uh, experience that you have in a player is all of a sudden being uh, uh, addressed and compromised by the fact they're getting those repetition at practice, they've gotten repetition in games, they're a better player than they were when they started in training camp. Now they can play and uh, uh, not get you killed and be productive in a game. Jerry Jones joins here on 105 to the fan. You know, we talked to you before San Francisco. We kind of talked about this being a measuring stick game. Do you see Philadelphia in the same way, or is it a little different because you've had a little bit more success against them lately? Well, I uh, am a little reluctant to measure because these games have such real consequences. I'm, I'm a little reluctant to use the term measuring stick. Now, I know where you're coming from, and it's a legitimate question. And I am anxious to see how we play against the Philadelphia Eagles at their home, uh, under their, uh, under where they're playing right now, and where we are, uh, but I'm I'm more interested in on any way known to man coming out of there with a, a victory than I am uh, also stepping back and saying this is how we measure up. 
because I know that ball is not round, it's oblong, and it'll bounce any erotic way you want to bounce it. And so a lot of things come into coming out with a win. But if we came out with a win because we just literally were uh, uh, pretty uh, impressed, pretty impressive uh, in any phase of our game, uh, that would... uh, uh, that would be a way to say, boy, we can uh, look, uh, we'll see them again. And then we all know you've got them to deal with in the playoffs. Jerry, are there any parallels or lessons to be learned with this week's buildup after what happened against San Fran with all the hype and buildup that had? I think so. I think so. Uh, but we've always known it. Uh, you, no matter what, if you uh, get it reeling and get reeling and get back on your heels, uh, you can really uh, have that score be pretty lopsided against you. And uh, good teams can have that happen. And uh, we won a Super Bowl and uh, opened up against the Washington Redskins, and they annihilated us in Washington. Yet we won the Super Bowl. So uh, uh, you... uh, have a lot of different consequences. Uh, this one has serious consequences relative to standing and relative to where we're, uh, how we get to and where we get to in the playoff. But more importantly, just as it, it, we're playing the number one team rated, ranked right now in the NFL and is in my view. And so, uh, and we played San Francisco when they were number one and uh, got it handed to us. So, uh, we need to have a better accounting, hopefully, than we did against San Francisco when we went out there. Jerry, has the leap, it, it, it has made me sound and look stupid, but has the leap that Jalen Hurts has taken surprised you at all? And what are your overall thoughts on his game? Oh, I think uh, what we asked Jalen Hurts to do is uh, 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 really unique. Unique. And uh, for him to have... Uh, Uh, be able to play in there that close uh, to where that type of action is, like a linebacker, and at the same time cover those tight ends. And so, uh, uh, no, I think he's playing very, very well. Uh, We have uh, three or four players that have those unique skills that are capable of coming up, making the stop, uh, yet at the same time staying with tight ends or receivers. That's one of the fundamental attributes uh, or a fundamental requirement of uh, of the way Dan Quinn plays defense. My bad, Jerry. I think I misspoke. I meant to ask about Jalen Hurts, your impressions of him, and has the leap that he's taken surprised you? Yeah, Hurts. I thought you said Jalen Curse. Yeah, my bad. Okay, no, mine. Uh, (laughs) But, um, well, I just, uh, uh, right now, uh, uh, he's got that team leadership-wise. Uh, playing at a level that has him ranked number one. Uh, He has the talent. We respect uh, his strength, and he has just evolved and gotten better and better and better in every phase. And so, uh, and what they do at quarterback, the style offense they play maximizes his abilities. I know this is all arm waving in general, but it's a fact. And so, obviously, we've got to slow him down. Jerry, uh, obviously you guys have some injuries at the left tackle spot right now. Tyron Smith not able to go on Sunday. Chuma Idoga then getting hurt uh, in the game. If either of those guys are unavailable for you on Sunday, would the the plan be to go with Richards or or would you consider moving Tyler Smith outside to left tackle? Well, let's don't uh, go that far because uh, when you look at both their situations, I actually think it's more than likely both will be available Sunday. Now, and so I, I wouldn't want to speculate anything beyond that, but certainly one of the two should be available Sunday, and both may be. Jerry, one of the years of Halloween, you had a very interesting outfit that caught a lot of attention uh, with the NFL official shirt. What <laughs> Halloween costume do you have planned for today? Well, uh, you mentioned the shirt, but I also had real thick, dark uh uh, sunglasses, uh, <laughs> as though uh, I weren't trying to see anything as well. I was trying to leave that out. I was trying to do you a favor and leave that out. Captain Kane, I know you want to leave that out, and I want to have all the sensitivity in the world, but we were uh, 
uh, taking a shot at the the um, officiating. <laughs> but uh, if, uh, I don't uh, feel sorry for the little darlings. I think a lot of them, and I know their challenges. But uh, uh, I sometimes don't think a lot of the little darlings, so I don't want to be too sweet. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> oh, my God. And what about this year's costume? Well, uh, I think I'm going to go with something kind of away from – anything that might uh, uh, stir things up. And uh, uh, I'm trying to decide uh, whether I'm going to go in there suave like Dan Quinn or go in there with a little uh, a robust uh, coach's outfit like uh, Mike McCarthy's going on. Uh, uh, I may try to be them all. I practice that around the house before I get out in public. So we, we won't be seeing you at a spirit Halloween store today. <laughs> that's, that's, be out there. that's right, Jack. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, I've had some of my most fun uh, as a kid uh, during Halloween. And uh, by the way, the kid was when Stephen was about 16 or 17, and uh, this kid was about 42. And uh, we liked them all gotten in jail. And we were tricking them more than getting treated. (laughs) Well, look, uh, best of luck this weekend. We cannot wait. It's another Philly matchup. And, Stay safe with those fans out there. Yeah, this is uh, easy for me to say, but this is serious sh- that we're dealing with up here, <laughs> Sunday man. <laughs> uh, we got uh, we've got to really uh, have our game face on, and Philadelphia is a tough place to uh, uh, get your momentum going. But uh, it's all there, and <clears throat> to me, this is all about. Uh, 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 just what the NFL can be. <clears throat> I had a, a, a priest, Father Tribu, that uh, both my sons went to a Catholic school there uh, when we lived in Little Rock. And uh, but Father Tribu really became their their master, uh, uh, and he was just that. He was uh, Bill Clinton took him to see the Pope when Bill Clinton was president. He was such an educator, but his family was from Philadelphia and he was raised by all sisters. All girls raised him, and so you can imagine he had a, a lifelong uh, wit about him, but also a lifelong uh, uh, resentment because they put dresses on him when he was young. <laughs> but uh, we used to have a big time. But I'll never forget I was walking through the uh, stadium, and uh, you have to to get to uh, uh, the dressing room and get to where you're going to sit to watch the game. And I heard somebody yell over the background and said, look at that arrogant SOB. Said, even got his own priest going along with him. <laughs> said, doesn't that take a lot of audacity? And, of course, I winked at him and blew him a kiss and said, you bet. <laughs> oh my God. Radio it's Gold, amazing. as always, sir. Congrats on the win. Best of luck in Philly and happy Halloween. Thank you, as always, Jerry. You guys. All right, bye-bye. 